In the last video, we looked at how to audit uh, system files. Let's look at auditing for other things. So I'm going to do an audit uh, CTL here, hyphen L. And you'll see that I have that one. We're monitoring for Etsy password with our keyword of Beck password here. So let's monitor for other things. So we're going to use audit CTL to monitor for syscalls. And uh, if I take a look here, I've got a link here in my class uh, for this syscall table. I've got a reference point here on this particular command, audit CTL hyphen A always exit. We see that in all the tutorials. I haven't figured out exactly what that comma separated list does there. Um, the architecture, though, this is a 64-bit operating system. And system calls for 32-bit versus 64-bit are different, so you have to specify that. Um, B64 is how we do that for this 64-bit operating system. Um, hyphen S is what syscall are we going to audit for? We're going to look at that. And then we have hyphen F. Um, And we see that twice. We're building a rule field with a hyphen capital F. I had to look that one up. And then we're going to have a key for our search key. So let's go ahead. And I have a link to this system call uh, table here for 64-bit. Um, and it's this website. And so all of these names here, we have our system call number. Um, and we have all of our names. Uh, for what we're going to look for. So let's look for any time uh, a file is killed on the system. If you have too many of these, it can slow down your operation. So if I search for the word kill here, we can see that uh, syskill has the name of kill. So let's look for any time a process is killed, for starters. So that's how we know that's going to work. And so I'll come over here to where the S is. And I'll put our syscall that we've located kill. And the key is going to be Beck underscore kill. I know I'll be able to search for that. Okay, so now we're monitoring for any time a process uh, is killed. Let's test it. I'm going to go ahead and do a pico test one, two, three. Actually, I'm going to do something different here. I'm going to do a pico, and I'll call this my file, because I just tested this with something called uh, test123. My file, 123.txt. And I'm going to background this. We're going to do control Zulu, control Z. So we've got pico running in the background, and we can kill this process from our present location. So I'm going to do a ps hyphen uh, ax. And I'll grep for pico to get the process ID of pico here. We can see our grep command has a process ID of 2968. But the actual pico command has a process ID of 2961. So I'll do a kill, and we'll see if this works, 2961. And you can see it didn't indicate probably that it was killed. So I'll check it again. And we'll see it's still running. Didn't want to, That kill didn't want to work. So let's, let's be more aggressive. And let's do a kill hyphen 9 and uh, 2961. And that should get the job done, that level 9 kill. Um, and it's going to say, OK, that process has been killed. So I just went in and terminated process ID 2961. Let's do our AU search. Let's look for our keyword, Beck underscore kill. And if we look down here, and I'll just hit enter a bunch just to bring it up, we can see that we have a process called pico. Here's our syscall, and our syscall number is 62. That was on the chart. Um, user uh, bin bash was able to execute this kill command on process ID 2961, and we can see that the user ID on this we got all zeros so this was the root user who did it so we can see what was killed who did it um, all the information we need about a process that was killed and if you have a process that's being terminated on a system 
uh, this would be a great way to kind of track it down. Let's uh, find another one that we can kind of work with here. And let me find my list. Here it is. It's a searchable list. Uh, and so we can monitor for all kinds of different things here. Um, let's monitor for, let's say, file permissions. We want to know if file permissions are changed on the system anywhere, like anywhere at all. So I'll do a control F on this list and I'll look for my chmod command. And you can see there are several different ones. We have chmod, fchmod. It could be one of those. Um, I think the one that we're looking for is um, system call 268, which is fchmod at. That's the one that I'm going to try to trigger. And uh, so let's write a rule for that. And this will be a part of the challenge that I issue later. So I'm just going to use my up arrow to go back to my command because it's going to be easier to generate my rule that way. There it is. And um, I'll do my S. And this time I'm going to put in fchmod at that's the syscall that I want number 268 there and I'll call this Beck perm change <clears throat> because somebody's tried to change permissions somewhere okay and now we're monitoring for that so uh, at this point I'll go ahead and I'll echo one two three into a file and I will call this my file one two three dot text if we do ls we can see we have a file here called my file one two three dot uh, text i'll get rid of that other one um, and if i do an ls hyphen alh we can see that um, my file one two three dot text has six four four permissions All right, well, let's change them. CH mod, and let's go 777. My file, 123.txt. Let's trigger that syscall. Now let's do an AU search. Let's look for our keyword, Beck underscore perm change. Let's see what we get. And uh, if we take a look here, we can see we, we've got a call to syscall 268 and the executable that was run was user bin chmod and we can see that the path was my file 123 uh, dot text and we can see also what permissions were assigned to it I don't see the permissions that were assigned, but I see the permissions that it did have under mode here. Uh, we did have 644 in terms of our old permissions, so we can see what it was at least. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm not seeing that. So there's a way to go in. And again, if we wanted to uh, take this particular rule right here, that hyphen A, uh, and edit it or add it, we'd have to go into our Pico Etsy audit and uh, our rules.d and it would be smart to start to add something like this 10 chmod dot you know rules and to create a new file inside of rules.d because it'll look for everything in there and uh, if we just add that now on restart that rule will always be applied and uh, we'll be notified anytime uh, chmod takes place. So th this is awesome. I mean, if something is going wrong on the system and you're not sure what, if you understand the concept of system calls, do a little bit of research, audit D, um, you can track down what's happening and figure out pretty specifically um, what's happening where.